Welcome to this session for the Power Pack for Advanced Steel. And we're taking a look at the Create Macros, in particular stairs. And we're going to look at the profile type selection and how to align it. So we're in Advanced Steel and we're taking a look at the Power Pack from Greytech, in particular at staircases. And we're looking at the stringer element here. So we're on the outer stringer here. And we can see obviously that it's set to the type that runs past the, the side of the face of the tread. So this is called close side beam plate type. So we're going to leave it on that radio button setting there for this demonstration today. Next, we look at the profile here. So this is where you're accessing the profile database. And I'm just going to change the size of this outer stringer. And you'll see that influenced on the left hand side of the stair here. So you'll see that change within the dialogue. And you'll notice it's now different to the inner stringer. That's because they're not set to be identical. I can make them identical, so force them to be the same. So they will be basically a copy of each other. So the outer element is controlling what's happening to the inner element now. So the next bit to look at is to look at the positioning. So we're going to talk about the basic positioning. So at the moment, it's set to top. If we change it to center, it will actually move the stringer body relative to the tread body. And by that, it will alter its position and place it equally spaced between the tread and the two outer stringer faces, front and rear. If we just put it back to top for this example now, we can see that it's going to change the figure. Now, the offset field top depth will become available. So normally to see what's going on or where it's been controlled from, if you put that to zero in here, you'll see that the top edge of this stringer will actually drop back to be aligned with the toe stroke nosing line of the stair. Now similarly, you can influence it again on the bottom edge with the opposing field then becoming active. So the top field will become inactive and this field will become active. So again, if you type zero in here, you will be able to see the underside edge align to the heel stroke back of the tread. So we can see it there. So let's just put that back to top and align it back to top and give it a measurement offset of 20 millimeters. So that is a perpendicular measurement, by the way, not a vertical measurement. So it's a perpendicular offset of 20 millimeters to the top edge of the stringer face in the profile section type. So the other element to look at is obviously relative to landing panel, which is here. Now that is because you may have landings in the stair and we'll cover landing in a separate session. But if we enable the bottom landing, for example, just to demonstrate what's happening, you'll see some stringer elements that are termed in the dialogue that are formed within the stair. So you can see that those, those stringer elements like this one and these opposing ones here are now present within the stair macro. So if we just pop back to that dialogue there, we can obviously see that presently at set to input. If we change it to top, it will make a difference here. So we just wait for that to update. And we can see it drops down flush. So to achieve the same offset value, you have to change it to input. And then the field becomes active for you to put the offset value in. So in here, we'll put the value of 20 millimeters, which is coming by default, but you could just type it in there. So that's sort of how it works within a profile. So let's just come back to the properties tab, remaining on the outer, and we're going to change to plate. So we're going to change the section profile to be a profiled plate. So this is cut from plasma, water jet, laser cut depending on which manufacturing facility you want to use to achieve this. So we can see that we now have a profiled plate there. So if we now change here, we can see obviously some of the positioning options have changed. So we now have top and bottom set as default. 
So at the moment we have a bottom depth of zero. So if we were to put a figure in there, you'll see that the stringer will actually increase its width across here and put a projection outside again the tread pattern itself. And it's obviously influencing the total plate width here. Now what you can do is obviously bias to the top again. So if we bias to the top in this instance, and what I'm actually going to do is force a change again, just so that you can see this happening. So if I put the zero in here, you'll see that the bottom depth offset figure will increase. And that's obviously increased to 40 millimeters. The total plate width has stayed the same at the moment. I'm going to come back to that slightly in a minute. Similar, if I go back to bottom now, and change that the fields will sort of swap around again so now at the moment we have an offset of 40 millimeters so if we change that to zero there it will work from the heel part of the tread or the rear underside and you'll see the string move forward if we go as I said top and bottom it obviously aligns again similar to what it did on the channel and with that, the two fields will become active, so you can then influence the size of the plate. So if we put 20 on the front, we'll get a projection of 20. There's still zero on the back at the moment, but then I can come in and change this field as well, putting a value in there. And you can see that the total plate width is actually changing, so the plate width is being influenced by these offset values here. Now in this instance with top and bottom, it's these two cells that alter the total plate width. But if you wanted to control the total plate width yourself, in other words, make it a known figure, you can actually do that by changing it to top or bottom. You'll see that the total plate width field becomes available and you can round this size up to a more recognized size. So in my case, I'm rounding up to 250 millimeters. And that will increase the depth of the stringer on the rear portion of the tread. And obviously we still have the, the, the landing turned on there. And we can see obviously we've got similar offset values, drop downs available here, top and bottom, bottom, etc. So this the bottom would work from the underside of the tread. And obviously the top is working off the top face. So what we could do in here is set to the same setting here. So let's set to top. And we now see that the fields active will change. So what I'm going to do in here, so if I put that to zero, we'll see it drop down to the landing panel. So the plate that forms the landing panel is going to drop down and be flush to that. And it's obviously going to change its relative position. Now at the moment, the plate width is actually being driven by this plate width up here. So even though I move that down, we've made it so that the plate width drives into this field in here unless the user wishes to override it. So let's put a 20 millimeter figure in there to lift the edge of the stringer face up under the plate type. So we're going to lift it back up for 20 millimeters inside and out. Remember, it's obviously identical stringer, so they're linked together. I'm going to come in and activate this checkbox in here. And this will activate the pl total plate width field below. And when that's active, I can come in and change this value. So let's make it slightly smaller. And you'll see that the plate for the landing stringer elements is now going to be reduced upwards. So the underside is going to move up in here and obviously the crank position is going to slightly change. So obviously I made a slight typo there. So let's just put that in again. So it didn't break the macro, which is a good thing. So I'm just going to put that back in. So now you can see, so, so you're influencing what's going on in there. If you don't have that, it will follow this depth in here. So let's uncheck that and we'll see that change back again. So 
So that's how we control the positioning of the stringer. We can also influence the plate width when you're using a profiled plate type stringer. Obviously, if you want to use a flat type, type stringer, so using a flat profile, you would set it under, under this element here, just changing it to flat within the database. But that is the primary elements to control both the stringer and the landing stringer elements.